Hey guys, I'm Avran. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is about Embed Chain, a very interesting uh, Python library which I recently came across at least one or two weeks back. This is something which helps us to easily create large language model powered bots. You see, it uses LangChain uh, for the large language model framework, the chunking, the data, indexing data. It uses the OpenAI's models. It allows you to use that. It also uses the Chrome as a vector database. So for me, it's very interesting and that's why I thought I would give a try to it. Also, I would make this video dedicated on this embed chain, a quick video probably, how to kickstart with it. And I hope it will be interesting for you guys as well. So, uh, so I won't waste any more time here. I will directly go make a web app using embed chain and a stream lead fronted using data button. So all I did out here was I created a new uh, web app for myself. So a new template kind of, you can say. And I also have my uh, open AI. As you can see, I give a name as embed chain, the app's name. You can find all this in my previous tutorials as well with data button. And I have the secret which is stored out here. I will reveal that. And I have uh, installed these packages, the open AI and the embed chain. People install embed chain. So instead of doing that in data button, all you need to do is you just packages name. So once you have all this part, you can just go to your pages and you can just start writing your code. Uh, so we'll just follow how embed chain actually suggests us how what to do. We're just importing the OS module. And then we are defining a variable called open API key where we're using the data button secrets. So basically it's like streamlit secrets. We're getting the secret, which we just uh, kind of added in our uh, one of the secret configuration box out here. Also use this way. You can just uh, basically if I run this code, you'll see what, how it works. So you can just initiate kind of a text input box for that, but we don't need that part of the code because now we'll directly call it. Otherwise you can initiate uh, text input box where the users can dump their own uh, open AI API key. But for this, we just get it from our data button secrets key. And once it's done, it gets uh, os.environment, it just gets initiated out here. So this whole part is for initiating uh, the open AI key, right? By the way, in my previous videos, I have shown how to get the open AI API key from where you can get it. Uh, I think it's all clearly mentioned and I'm expecting you guys to know that. If not, please go back to the previous video. I have a complete uh, watch list on that. A few other uh, modules which you need to import out here is the import time. Uh, this is again useful for uh, timing our uh, chat messages. We'll come to that later. Uh, import the open AI. That's very crucial because you're using the open AI API key. And we use the from embed uh, chain, we import the app. Uh, this particular line, actually what we'll follow is directly from the repository, okay? But what we'll do is we'll initiate the bot first since Streamlit runs from the very top to the bottom. So we don't want to initiate this bot each and every time. Instead, we will use a, like a catch function, right? Catch uh, data or catch resource we can do. Once we do this, we'll write this uh, few uh, lines of code as a function, we'll just uh, wrap it into a function and we will just pass an argument call as URL. So basically we are trying to talk with a, or chat with a, uh, any web URLs, right? So we'll just, uh, let's say we, we use this uh, function called bot add. So what URL we want to add and we say data button. So we will just uh, data button bot. So basically now we will talk with data buttons uh, documentation maybe, or we can just also use stream leads documentation. Doesn't matter, okay? I just name it that way. It bot, a bot and that's the our bot's name and the app we just leave it this way because this is one of the uh, module if i'm not wrong we just import it out here so cool so once we have this part the next part will be data button bot uh, dot add and here we will define it as web as web uh, web page right so that's something which uh, which we'll also find in the embed chain if i'm not wrong so here they show us how you can do it. Basically, if you want to add search a web page, you just need to define it as that way. That's the argument out here, which you need to put. And then we'll just pass the URL of the web page. It's uh, very straightforward. And then next part is we'll return the whole data button bot. That's it. So we already have this function. And this is basically we are initiating uh, the bot, the embed uh, chain bot. We can call it as that way. So next part is about giving our user a URL to embed, right? URL uh, to embed. And you see now we get a, a text input box. The next part will be once the URL is there, we initiate or we uh, initialize the bot. And that's why where we will uh, use this particular function bot add. For example, it has done the same way how we how we see in the example of uh, embed chain. If st.button 
we just run this particular uh, function, right? So let's do it this way. First, we say button and we just copy this part here. I'll tell you why I'm doing it separately here. We just do it this way, data button, bot equal to uh, this particular function and we pass the URL to embed. Cool. So now every time whenever users are uh, put some random uh, URL, initialize the bot, the bot will be initialized when this button is pressed. So one thing we already know about Streamlit's uh, button, which, which is always goes into a false state or the active state of the button becomes false when it's pressed. I have discussed this very clearly in one of my previous blog posts as well. So once we click this button, anything or any lines of code, which is after that will only be runs once it is clicked. But if you want to keep this whole bot in an active state, we need to either convert this button to a checkbox because then the state of the app is an active state or we need to create a uh, control the state of it. So how we can do that, we can do that very easily using a session state, uh, which will be kind of storing the state of this button uh, within a session. So let me write a few lines of code for that. If Great, so the initial value is false. So what we do next is if button or st dot session state uh, dot button state, if either of them is true, I hope it is, we just uh, add st dot session state dot button state we just make it true once it runs and then we can easily initialize our bot and this all of the codes underneath uh, this particular button will say in active state so we just uh, just give a success message like uh, bot initiated perfect so once we reach this part the rest of the code is very straightforward it's mainly uses the chat history the chat elements which we see out here unlike how we were using langchain until now here there are only few lines of code but when you need to put inside or make a chat board within our stream app we need this chat elements and that's something which we will use straightforward i'll just copy and paste the code you will see how it works this whole code is mainly coming from one of this uh, simply documentation. If you see this conversational uh, apps uh, documentation, here you will find uh, most of the code which I just copied and pasted from there. Okay, uh, I'll just go step by step so it's easier to understand, but I will also dedicate a whole video on that uh, chat elements later. The first part is about this the chat message history, which is uh, the app will rerun every time. So we need to display this history every time. So we store it as one of the session state, then we loop over them and we uh, display the chat message from the history of the app rerun. We give a particular text input box for accepting the prompt from users. That's why this is uh, super useful here. Then we append this prompt to one of these session state messages. So it remembers what are the um, message history from the user end. And then we display it in a markdown format, okay? It's very straightforward. We create a placeholder. You can also see the same uh, way we have built a previous chat board in, uh, in my last video. In the very last video, we created a very similar cell. We did the same thing. Here we create a placeholder for uh, using the streamlit.mt. And this, uh, this particular data button bot, which we created here, we pass the, uh, the query to it, this prompt which the user gives us. It's very straightforward, these few lines of code. All the magics are happening out here. It's as straightforward as how we pass the query out here. Instead, here we use the text input box or the chat input box, which is kind of in a form of a text input box, and we pass the query. Until this part is more about how we can uh, accept the user input and then pass it to the box. The next part is about chunking them or you know using them as a streaming way for streaming it. That's where we need this particular module called as time. So basically we are kind of streaming it with a pause every time. So we're using the sleep function and then we're just dumping that 
after the response you're dumping with this particular just appending this particular you can just change it with anything it doesn't matter and once we uh, dump this we store back the full response again so we create a whole append of the user's response as well as the response which you get for the chat board and once it's done it's all getting showed out here in this placeholder which you initiated before so let's run this part of the code and you will see now we have to first initiate a bot because we also gave a nice else loop out here right so let's initiate the bot with particular uh, url let's say we use this particular url of data button and we just add it here and we press enter and we just initialize our bot so our bot is getting initialized so our bot got initiated using the open AI api key this chat element is formed because we use this chat input out here and it is stored as a prompt so let's run this part okay so we say uh, uh and we just hit the enter you will see now this first thing is formed because because this uh, this chat message which is user way which is coming out it it just kind of uh, dumps the prompt which the user gives and the next part if you again if i just let me just again uh, copy this message and show you the the next part will be coming out because of this message holder which is creating the response in a streaming way you will see the streaming will be coming up here i press it again and you will see the streaming the streaming is coming up this is all because there's a time which has been used out here it's a very smart way this chat element has been built by stream and that's pretty cool but we should not forget one thing out here this whole embedding is done by the embed chain this embed chain is actually wrapping up a lot of lang chain stubs under the hood and that's why the query knows what's happening out here so when we initiate the data button board the embedding is already done out here and then the bot is passed with a query which is again our embed chains one of the method that is super cool out here that's why it's very easy to build a bot with just few lines of code i mean we don't even need all this stuff set here we can already do it with this particular few line okay let's let's try another example let's say we want to use this phase vector db i think this is something which a lot of people wants to know how to store and load phase vector db over data buttons out so let's 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 see what we can do out here i hope this keywords will be enough to understand let's see what it does it's running it's running so look the output is coming in a streaming pattern and it's all coming because of the way we assign it out here also it is so cool that with few lines of code we did this whole stuff using embed chain using streamlit's uh, amazing uh, uh, chat elements which we provides and the whole stuff can be used using data button and now if i just click this particular place deploy this app our app will be deployed in no time and you can also share with everyone using enable open link you copy this part and once it's deployed you can share in the incognito mode as well so let me just go back once it's getting deployed i'll just let's say open a uh, private window and i'll just paste it here it will show some error probably now uh, but we'll come back to that let's see let's wait for the app to get deployed so the app is now deployed now we go back to this app here i'll just rerun it again let's see how it works cool so we just paste uh, no this won't work so let's let's try something uh, with this uh, let's use streamly documentation right and i just copied this part i go back to the app and i just initiate our bot first so we are talking with a uh, url so we it's a bot is initiated we just uh, write about what is uh, chat input okay i don't know if this will work or not let's try what is chat input box the chat input box is the area where you can type your message or input the chat interface it is a space provided to you enter your text and send it as a chat message so you see how easily this whole stuff gets embedded because of this one line of the app which is chatbot dot add we give web page next time you can use your pdf file as well or a youtube video and then this particular query which i just passed here is using uh, this particular bot which we just created the inst we instantiated a chatbot 
we just passed a query to it it's all done using just two lines of code out here and later out here in this query part that powerful it becomes using embed chain and within just few lines of code you made a whole new web app out here cool so i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you guys think about it i'll be making more videos especially about how this uh their uh, chat elements are working now with the streamlit new features it's very exciting and just give me some suggestion what you guys want to know about the large language models open ai or cohort please throw them over the comment section below also big shout out to all my patreons it's really i'm really grateful for their humble support and it really makes me uh, feel much more uh, enthusiastic to make more and more videos i'm really grateful to all of you guys for watching this video sharing them and i hope we all grow together so for today this is all i have and i will see you guys in the next video cheers